Hello fellow Earthlings. Uh, we're going to do a video here on adjusting the valves in a GX series Honda engine. Um, the, the Honda GX series engines come on many of the walk behind tractors we sell. Uh, anything from the GX240 all the way up to the GX390. Uh, it's also a pretty common engine out there on other equipment in the world and this valve adjustment procedure applies to them all. Uh, one of the reasons we want to talk about adjusting the valves, beyond the fact that they simply get out of adjustment occasionally, is one of the main symptoms of the valves getting out of adjustment uh, is that people notice that their manual start engines get a lot harder to start after a few years. They'll, they'll if you, uh, you know, when you're trying to pull them, it'll really pop you back and kick you back and hurt your arm and shoulder and everything else. Um, the reason that they do this is because the valves get out of adjustment. Now that may not seem to make sense. What do valves have to do with turning the engine over? But what the valves are doing, the valves are part of the compression release system in these engines. And all these small engines, any, any small engine, I don't care if it's a Briggs or a Honda or what, they all have an automatic compression release system that releases a little bit of compression at low engine RPM. That is when the engine is at cranking RPM, not running RPM, but cranking RPM, there's a compression release that occurs in the engine. And that compression release operates by opening one of the valves just a little bit to bleed off a little compression to make it easier to start. Well, when the valves get out of adjustment, all of a sudden, that little bit of movement, somebody else will get the phone, we have other staff to do that. Uh, Ken is running the camera, and of course I'm doing this, but there's other people here, so we're gonna ignore the phone. Um, at any rate, that little bit of movement of the valves is used up by the slop, the extra slop in the valve train. The valve doesn't open, the compression release doesn't work, and the thing tries to break your arm and you curse it and all that. We don't want cursing, so we have to fix these. Uh, this procedure also is essentially the same for all brands of engines with overhead valves. That is, whether you have a Subaru Robin or a Kohler or a Briggs & Stratton, if it's got overhead valves, the procedure is going to be more or less the same. Some of the details are different, like the position of the locking nuts and whatnot, but the, but the premise is the same. So, this is the BCS 749. This is our demo unit. Uh, the valves are pretty far out of adjustment, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, now, this, this particular unit has a pretty small bumper on the front, so the bumper does not in interfere with the valve cover. This is the valve cover. It says OHV on it, overhead valve is what that stands for. This is what you have to remove to do the valve cover. Some of the BCS and Grillo machines have a bumper that wraps around the side of the engine and gets in the way of this, and you have to remove the bumper, which is just four nuts and bolts at the bottom of the engine. So if, you need, if, your, engine, if your bumper is that type, just take the bumper off. This particular engine we have outfitted with this big crazy looking uh, cyclonic air filter. This is actually not standard on a BCS. We just had an extra one of these and put it on here and it's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off just so this thing is not hanging in my way. Normally you wouldn't have to take the air cleaner cover off. I've also got an old toothbrush around here. I'm just gonna use that to brush away the dust and stuff. I'll pull the spark plug cap off to get that out of my way as well. Just want to get the dirt out that's kind of caked up around this. This isn't too bad, but I, when I take this valve cover off, I don't want a bunch of dirt to fall into the, into the opening there because we'll get dirt contaminating the inside of our engine. So I'll get off the big dust. I'll also pull off this little uh, breather tube. This is just a rebreather that connects up with the uh, air cleaner. I don't think it's even connected at the other end. Wow, amazing discoveries when you work on your own equipment. But anyway, that just recirculates the crankcase crankcase fumes into the carburetor. Yeah, okay, we'll fix that later. Get this brushed off here. Okay, now we've got a 10 millimeter wrench to take the valve cover off. 99% of the time, you will not need to replace this gasket. The gasket is rubber and very durable and uh, should survive many times being removed. So there's the valve cover come off. The gasket actually stayed in place. So I guess it's on there pretty well. I'll take it off. Yeah, there we go. Brush that away. Okay, a little dirt fell right there. All right, set that all aside. Now we've got Ah, thank you for a little extra light, Ken. 
So here's the, the valve rocker arms. These are, the, these are called the rocker arms. These are the valve springs. The valve itself is going right down the center of the spring. So this, this rocker arm is pushing on the tip of the valve. Again, rocker arm. The push rods are under here. The push rod basically pushes up on this end of the rocker arm, rocking the rocker arm like this. This is the fulcrum point of the rocker arm in the center where these adjustment bolts are. So we've got the, the push rods, the rocker arm, the fulcrum point with adjustment bolts, and then the valve and valve springs itself so that the, the, it works like a seesaw essentially. And in fact, I'll crank the engine over slowly here and you can watch the valves in action. Okay, so now the valve is getting actuated. You saw them rock right there, the intake and exhaust strokes. Break it through real slow. Okay, there's one. There's the other, and there's the little compression release stroke. You saw it move that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank the engine to the point where both rocker arms are loosest, and that's usually right around top dead center. Kind of you roll it until you see both valves actuate, you see the compression release actuate, and you crank it a little further than that, and you're right on the compression stroke top dead center. So that's the loosest that the valves can be. That's somebody with the intercom, but we're going to ignore that because we're shooting a video. So, now we're going to use a set of what's called feeler gauges. This is one of the other tools you need for this. I mean, you only need three tools really for this operation. Uh, well, maybe another one if you have to remove the bumper, but you need a 10 millimeter wrench, uh, a 14 millimeter wrench, which is going to go here, and a feeler gauge. So, the feeler gauge that we want to use is six thousandths or one and a half millimeters. We want to check the clearance between the top of the valve and the rocker arm. Now that just falls in there, so that I know there's more than six thousandths on that one. Also on that one, I mean that just loses a goose. So we want to tighten it up uh, so that the six thousandths is nice and tight in there, nice and snug. Now uh, these studs in the middle here um, are, the, this is a stud coming out from the cylinder head and that stud is screwed in at the far end. So the, the stud itself is threaded into the aluminum cylinder head. We have seen cases where this is causing a problem. Um, because somebody does a valve adjustment and the, the process for doing the valve adjustment is you loosen up this little jam nut on the top, that's the smaller nut, you loosen up the jam nut to release the tension on the main adjustment nut, crank the adjustment nut down a little bit to take to, to, to tighten up the valve or tighten up the rocker arm that is and then retighten the jam nut. Well if you're not careful when you're loosening the jam nut you can actually loosen the entire stud. The entire stud comes loose down here from the cylinder head. Well, if you do that and you don't know it, all of a sudden when you put the thing back together, it gets out of adjustment in about five minutes because the whole stud is backing out and it just you know, loosens right up again. So what's very important is that you hold the adjustment nut in place firmly while you loosen the jam nut so that the whole stud does not rotate. So I'm putting pressure this way. I'm actually putting a little pressure kind of tight in the tightening direction on the, uh, the main adjustment nut while I loosen the jam nut. Okay, that did, well, I thought it came loose there, went. Okay, now the adjustment nut is loose. Now I'm going to bring this down. Let's see, I'll move it just so I can quarter turn increments or something like that. We'll go a little bit at a time. And I'll just keep moving this until it gets snug. Ah, now it's getting snug. So that's pretty good. Now when I tighten the jam nut, usually it'll change the adjustment just a little. But I'll try to compensate for that. So let me, let me hold this here. Retighten the jam nut. Okay, snugged it up just a little bit. Let's check this again, see if it changed. Yes, it did. It got tighter. So that's, that's all right. That's what's to be expected. I'm going to do this again. Loosen this. I'll back this off just a little bit. Um, might be easier with the opening here. Yeah. Less interference. Okay. Check this again. Mm. It'll probably go, but it's a little on the tight side, so I'm going to loosen up a little more.
There we go. Slides in there nice and snug. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put an extra little bit of tightening on this. Okay, good. All right, and then we'll repeat the procedure on the other side. A little pressure on the adjustment nut in the tightening direction while I loosen the jam nut to keep that stud from loosening up. And then I can even do this with my fingers. Just draw down the adjustment nut until it gets a little bit snug. I'll back it off a little bit to make up for the fact that when the jam nut tightens down, it's going to tweak it down a little more. Whoops, I had to move that adjustment nut. Okay, let's crank this down. Do a check. Yeah, I still got it a little on the snug side. I didn't back it off quite enough for compensation there. snug I just you know it always works the third time right third time's the charm and there we are goes in nice and snug we're all good and tight so this is now adjusted it won't break our arm when we try to start it wipe the goo off down there put the valve cover gasket actually I'm gonna put the valve cover gasket back on the valve cover I think that's gonna be a little better it fits up into place Snaps in place around the edge. There's a little bit of a torn place right there. We'll have to replace that eventually, but today it's not going to get replaced. Put that back on. I'll cheat and use my T-wrench here, a handy thing to have around. You make a lot of repairs. And we'll there, get all the yuck out of that. Plug this back in. Jam that back in the hole there. There we go. Slid back in the hole. Plug it onto the other end up here by the carburetor. The way it's supposed to be, that somebody did not do it last time. Get our spark plug back on. And then we're ready to grow. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And you can do this too.